In my last video, I talked about the Blue Eddy AC30 and how confused I was by that device. But I have to get to a place where if I force myself to choose, which would I get? The Golabs R300 or the Blue Eddy AC30? Surprise, I got both. What up, folks? <laughs> this is I from Ask Out Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. And uh, yeah, I got both of them. I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, man, you know what? I bought the Go Labs, but I'm having a bit of buyer's remorse. And in my last video, you know, I talked about how maybe I lost my way solar, solar, <laughs> solarily. <laughs> because I'm all about pass-through power in this particular phase. I'm not about storage because batteries cost and I don't be wanting to spend whatever. I, I, I'm getting besides the point. So why did I get both of these? I bought the Golabs first and I'm the main thing that I was dealing with was the fact that this would be a good update to my Bowden's 166 because it has a pure sine wave inverter. It can do bi-directional USB-C charging and it's charging up to 60 watts. My Bodans charges at 45 watts. I paid $120 for this device. This device cost me $199. I was like, you know what? That's that's a good upgrade. So then I started to think like, man, but you're all about pass-through power. And this dip, it has its drawbacks. Watch the last video if you're curious about those drawbacks. But it charges at 150 watts. I could literally put 200 watts of panels on this and just, you know, thug out for my day. My computer uses 20 watts. My monitor uses 13. My internet uses about 20. My TV uses 50. So if it's a sunny day, I, I can just charge this thing up or just allow it to just pass through the thing because these are LiPo batteries. I'm not necessarily concerned about the health of the battery, which has come under fire with pass through charging by someone in a group whose opinion that I value, John. Anyway, I try to get stuff at pretty good prices, which makes these purchases a little more palatable. I honestly thought about sending the Go Labs back. I mean, for $400, I got 600 watt hours of capacity. And it's like, well, you spent $400, then it's like, well, what could you have bought for $400? that's better than these. And I don't think there's a product out there. I can't get 600 watts for $400. There's the EcoFlow Pro, which is 650, but has a $100 coupon on it, which brings it down to 550. I was intrigued by that as well, because as you know, I have an EcoFlow Delta, the base for $300. One could, uh, <laughs> what's the word? One could posit that I probably should have just spent the 550 on that one, but it's $550 for like 760 watts of power. My thing is I have a two story home and I have stuff that runs all of those. So I wouldn't want to have one big device and run extension cords. I have small children, so that's not really a good look. I'd much rather have power divided into multiple devices so that I can bring one up, power a lamp, a camera, whatever, one down here, powering the internet, TV, whatever, one in my computer area so I can work and edit and so on and so forth. So I don't know if the R600 Pro was a good look for me to spend that much money. And the per watt hour price is not great on that one compared to what I spent for these. I mean, for $600, I would essentially have almost a kilowatt of battery if you go 369. But it's like if I spend $600, 550 on the Pro, I would only have 700 watt hours of battery capacity. And I'm just not about that. My second dilemma, Blue Eddy has this device called the EB70 that is um, slated to cost $500. Details on it are really sketchy. Um, I heard about it from this guy in this group that I'm in. His name is Steve. It has 700 some odd watts of power. It costs $500, which kind of gets me in my ballpark of what I would actually want to spend. Okay, so it has two 100 watt USB-C ports, which is great. And it's life for as well. I, there's some stuff that I may be missing. It takes in 200 watts of power, so it's extremely comparable to the entire R600 or the River series. And it charges via 200 watts from the wall. I don't know what that charger looks like. I'm still intrigued by that. I actually thought about returning these two. I'm like actively thinking about returning these two to get my $400 back and just waiting to get that one. And I, I don't know if I will do that. If I return these and I spend $500, I would have a quarter, like three quarters of a kilowatt of power.
I've spent $400 for 600 watt hours of battery on paper. You don't get those numbers for real. So if you look at it, like I said earlier, two, four, six would give me 900 watts of battery power. I'd have almost a kilowatt of power for $600. I know there's some people in my community who have a uh, thought. So ultimately, what do you guys think? What do you, do you think that it's better to get three separate devices for $200 a pop, totaling $600 to give you 900 watt hours of battery or to have one nice big LiPo battery for $500. So I'll...